Hello, um, I'm Gregory Marler and subscribers of Mapper Diaries might know I like to make jokes about locations um, as if I'm near Philadelphia or Washington. Um, not in the States, I'm in the northeast of England um, and this is another video with the United Religion Initiative um, but this is going to be more practical. I'm going to tell you how do we map places of worship and put them um, on to open street map if they're missing. So I've got a few things. I've, uh, I've got a coat because although it's really sunny now we can't trust the weather in the northeast of England and it might get cold or raining as I find these churches and mosques and various places of worship. I've also got a clipboard with me um, because before we get started finding these places that we want to put on OpenStreetMap First, we want to go back in time to before I left my house at the computer and I'm going to tell you a bit about some tips on how we, um, how we prepare to go out mapping. So uh, if you hold on for a moment and we'll just whiz back. Here I am in my house and I'm at the computer. So before I actually go out, I want to see what OpenStreetMap's like in my area. Um, hopefully you saw my talk before where I talked about why OpenStreetMap is important. But I really encourage you to look. So if we, if you load up a web browser, Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox um, and go to the website OpenStreetMap.org, you'll see a big map. And in the search, you can um, search for places such as New Bottle, um, where I did that little introduction, filming it just there. Um, what's also useful is if you're zoomed out, you can hold down shift and draw a box and it zooms into that area. Um, and the usual, you can um, drag the map around and you can use your mouse wheel or double click to zoom in and out. Um, and there's some controls on the right. So you get the idea of seeing where you are. And you can look in and you can see um, OpenStreetMap is well mapped. It's um, a lot of work's been done by volunteers around the world. Um, and most places will have all the roads mapped in some detail. So you can see here there's footpaths mapped along there. Um, there's parks and playgrounds and schools. Um, and we can even see one church that's been mapped there that we'll look at. Um, but there's residential areas and this is really helpful. It means we don't have to use tools on our on our phone or GPS equipment to know where we are. You can kind of work it out based on um, the roads already on OpenStreetMap. And it's important to know here we're looking at OpenStreetMap. Um, looking at other maps that don't use OpenStreetMap data, they're copyright protected. So you would have to have permission from the person who made the map and and sometimes that's quite complicated and get to get that uh, permission. Um, and there's a process in OpenStreetMap for when people do give us permission, but it's, it's we like to establish it's true. So instead, we just use um, what we've got. We do it ourselves. Um, so I can look at this area and, and maybe I know there's some churches around here or, um, or, or places um, such as spiritualist buildings and Jehovah Witness um, kingdom halls. So what we'll do, we could just um, keep this in mind. You can print this page, that's fine because it's OpenStreetMap. But there's actually a website I'm going to tell you called fieldpapers.org. Um, and this makes the process really easy um, if you're if you kind of want to take lots of notes and um, particularly because we can avoid and to use particular um, apps. And this is this field papers website uses OpenStreetMap data. So that's fine. Um, we can record information on it. It relates to OpenStreetMap. So we won't have a problem with then using that to improve OpenStreetMap. Um, and you can log in, but you don't have to. What we want to do is make yourself an atlas. And it gives us this uh, this kind of map. Um, so you can uh, still hold down shift 
and um, drag a box, then let go um, of your mouse and it zooms in. Um, and you see it's got some rather big squares. These are the right size for pieces of paper. Um, on the left, you can change it, either uses US letter paper, um, or you can use the more international standard of A4. Um, and you can use landscape or portrait, depending what fits well. Up here, you can change the number of pages. So if I wanted to map things in New Bottle, I could, um, I could use do it like that, or I could do it like that to uh, to cover a greater area. Maybe I might have to zoom out. Um, I might want to use Horton, and it fits better over two pages, um, or perhaps over four um, covers more of the area. So a lot of these, because it's just one church and it will cover one place, I can actually um, include most of it in one area and zoom in. Um, and once you've done that, we can uh, give it a name. Um, but we do that. We don't really need any of these other details. And then we uh, make Atlas. It takes a few moments, not too long. Um, to make it in fact it's done already and what this does is it creates a pdf of that page and i can go download pdf and this makes it really big simple it fits the page size um, gives us a little uh, scale and i can print that off on my computer um, and kind of get it on a piece of paper and that's going to be really helpful um, as i'll see um, when we go out. So um, with that piece of paper, let's go back into the future when I was outside in New Bottle. So you might have seen in the background of my introduction was this church, which is St. Matthew's. And I printed it out on um, field papers here on my, and put on my clipboard. Um, I can see the church is actually already mapped, but it's a good example because I can look, I'll show you the sign beside me, um, which shows me the name of the church. Um, and there's also a graveyard around the church, which not all churches have. That's been mapped, but we can, uh, we can circle that and say graveyard, and uh, we'll look at how to map that, as well as the church, which has been mapped as a building. And, uh, and as we look, we might see what other features there are. So, interestingly, just off camera, um, I'm going to put a little dot here. There's a, um, what they find is a memory tree. So I think that's a, a really awesome feature of this church. And I'm going to write down memory tree, and we'll see how we can add that to OpenStreetMap. And a look around that's probably it um to find out what kind of christian church it is is a bit tricky if you don't know um you could maybe ask the vicar but i think he's currently conducting a wedding so i won't interrupt that um until on a notice sometimes you know you think it'd be on the sign i saw a in a faded notice i saw a link to the church of england website so we know it's um see uh, yeah, C of E as we would uh, say here, and it's St. Matthew's. So I'll write that all down, but um, uh, before I finish here, there's a few things along the road which I want to look at, which I think are important. Well, you know, we're not just mapping the church, we're mapping the community around. So let's see what's down the road from here.
halfway down the road, so there's a post office that you can see is completely um, missing from Maple Street map. It's not on field paper. So I just wrote PO, that's my shorthand for post office, and the name of it is Newport Store. So I'll write that down. It's a newsagent for the post office. Um, and that's really helpful because it's part of the community improving the map and everyone. Um, got that information I've got scribbles on my field papers we can see about how we edit this on OpenStreetMap so we of course go to the OpenStreetMap website you'll be able to see that on my computer um, and in the top right you can see that there's normally a login or a sign up button um, so you can click sign up and um, it will then it's like most websites, you've got to put an email address, a username which your uh, changes will be um, shown as, that name, um, and then you confirm by email. Um, when you then log in, you'll be on OpenStreetMap, you see in the top right your username. So I'm known as Living With Dragons, um, and you can see I'm logged in. And we're here in New Bottle. You can use the usual features and zoom in. To edit OpenStreetMap, um, I can see there's St. Matthew's Church. That's a junction where I did the intro recording. Um, and you can zoom in. Zoom in close is good. But then um, if you click Edit here, the default editor uh, works in your web browser. So you can just... Um, Use that, it should work with most programs, you don't, with most systems, you don't have to download anything and um, it's straightforward. When you first use this, it does ask you if you want to do a walkthrough and that's a good way you can find out how to use the tool and edit without actually changing anything in OpenStreetMap. It, it lets you practice in a fictional place. Um, so you can walk through that um, and you don't have to watch this video. Um, but we're going to continue. Instead of doing the walkthrough, you can do edit now and you get a display like this. You can see um, that there, it's a bit different. There's some aerial imagery that we're allowed to trace from. We have permission. Um, you also start to see these dots, uh, kind of the points um, that I explained, and the roads are done as lines. Now, I remember it was between, looking at my notes, between Harloff and Garden Street. Um, there was this here was a shop um, or a post office to be more precise. So we can mark that as a really simple point. It's it's one place. So we click the point and then we just click where it is. And the aerial imagery actually helps us even more because it's that building. And if you type in the search um, for what you want, so this is a post office um, and it actually helps me out here. I could do post office. It's got a uh, post office UK um, So I'm going to click that and um, I can put in the name of it, which is new bottle food store um, So that's that's in there it asked me for some other information the operators post office because that's the UK group the UK company that runs them um, and that's why I took the UK one. I don't know the address or hours, so we can just leave these things blank. Um, but you can then see at the bottom after the suggested, it's got the actual information, um, those key value tags that I explained in my talk. And it's on these that, um, that the maps made, different displays are made and it can be searched for. 
So that post office was really simple. Um, going down here, we can then see, um, I remember that bus stop I looked at when I filmed the church hall. Um, and so this building is the one um, halfway between that road and Hartloft Road. Um, this was the church hall, which in open street map language we call a community centre. So I click that and I can add the name and I think um, it was called New Bottle Church Hall and Community Centre. I might have to look back at the video I did um, to see if I got that name right because I know I read it out um, there. But for now, I'll do that. The operator, we can put, we know it's run by St. Matthew's Church down the road. So that gives a bit of connection. Um, there's more information that I don't know. Um, but these are recommended things in the, the tags. Um, so we've got the community centre. We can actually put in religion equals Christian. And that further links, you know, that kind of makes it a church hall or what type of community hall it is. It's one connected to a church and run by church. Um, and it's not used a lot beyond places of worship, but that religion tag can be used for things like um, schools that also have connections with churches. Um, so that's a shop and the church hall. Up the road here, here's the church. We can see someone, as I said, someone's already mapped this. They've actually drawn it as an area to do the building. And when it's highlighted, we can click on it. So this changes the left panel to see about that. Um, and the religion's Christian, denominations Anglican, as we found out. They got a few bits of information like the address and actually the phone number. Um, and we can read that just from all the tags here, um, various things. And, you know, if anything, because this is OpenStreetMap, if anything was wrong or missing, um, we'd be able to, to add that in. So like my example in my talk at St. Lawrence Church, it had things like the deanery information and um, other data. I don't actually know that for this church because I... Um, don't think it will be part of Durham Deanery. It's a bit further out um, from from County Durham. Um, and I think it might be part of Sunderland. But because I don't know, I'll leave that. Someone else can add that in. Um, and that's a few things. That's uh, from our initial bit. Um, all looks good. Oh, there was, if I... It's always good to keep looking at your notes. Um, we can see that graveyard's also being mapped. Um, and so someone's been able to do that very well from aerial imagery. But there was the memory tree, which was near the entrance. I think it must have been here. I'll click there as a point. Um, and if I type tree, it makes some suggestions for us. We don't, in OpenStreetMap, map, we don't add every tree because that would take a lot of time. Um, and so... Um, we would often draw them as a wood. We draw an area and mark it as a wood. But this is a tree that's notable. Um, so I'm going to click tree. Um, it suggests some fields again, some specific ones. Um, this is about the tree, the leaf type, um, the height. I didn't take any notes of that. Maybe I should have. Um, and I'm not a tree expert. Um, but down the bottom again, we've got the tags we can add. And we already know name is a tag, so we can put name and we can put memory tree. Um, and so, so then if people search for memory tree, they'll find that. Um, I think it shows up on some map styles. Um, but yeah, someone else might put the leaf type there. Um, and so, so that's the various things we've added. Um, this so street map should be careful in that, but when you're ready and, and think it's done in the top right, there's a save button. And it's good to do that in small chunks um, before your internet connection unexpectedly drops out and you lose the data. Um, but we're gonna put, it asks for chain set comment. Um, so I've just typed here, adding the church hall and post office. 
This change set comment is basically when someone's looking at what you've edited or what changes have been made in the area. They'll get this comment and it explains it. So they can then look in detail at exactly what's changed or they can go, OK, that seems right. Um, you've also, when we're saving this, it is editing OpenStreetMap straight away. So any person or app that uses the data and downloads it afterwards will get this. Um, but what we can do is we can tick this box saying we'd like someone to review our edits. Um, that's particularly good if it's your first few times editing OpenStreetMap. Um, or if it's something new, maybe you've mapped other stuff. Um, you've mapped places of worship, but you've not mapped trees, for example. And all this does is it adds to a list where people that are watching more experienced mappers can go and they can see that list and check them and... Uh, Check everything's okay. They might make changes if they need to. Um, and hopefully they'll message you if there's something that um, you need to learn about that maybe I missed from these videos or, or wasn't clear. Um, but normally people are friendly and help out with that. So I've done that. I click upload. Um, doesn't take very long, just a few seconds. Um, and then we can st we're still in the editor. But if we click View Changes on OSM, it takes us to the area. Now, it does take a, a few minutes. It can take kind of 10 minutes for this to update and everything to refresh. Um, some parts of the world it takes a bit longer um, or if it's busy. Um, but we can come back and later and see if, if that's changed and, uh, and see our points on there. So there we go, the changes are there. And if we look at OpenStreetMap normally, you can see the church hall, the post office, and even the tree shows up there as memory tree. Um, so that's that. I'll, uh, I then didn't just want to look at one place of worship. Um, I then wandered around because I knew this area uh, hasn't, hasn't been all that well mapped. There's things missing. Um, so let's see what else I found. Hello, so nearby in Sunnyside I've come across this Methodist church. I've got the printout from field papers of Sunnyside and the church isn't on here. Um, so I'm going to look at the roads. Um, I know in this case the bus stops I think have been put in slightly the wrong place because um, they were imported. I might just make a note that they're elsewhere. Um, but looking that for the Bear Hen drive and uh, we're a bit further down than that so the church is just here I can do a circle a mark or in this case a cross so I know it's a church um, and it's a Methodist church so Methodist it's Sunnyside Methodist Church and I can write that short because I'll remember it or I can Make sure I get the name and spelling right by writing it fully. Um, I might also just take a photo of that. Um, and I look around, what else is helpful? Well, down the side of the church, you can't quite see, there's a footpath and I've gone and checked and that links up with the road behind the church. So um, I can do just a, a dashed line is my way of knowing it's footpath. And, uh, and that's all the information we know that it's a place of worship. What the religion is, is Christian because it's a church and going into detail with Methodist. Um, and that's enough detail. I could add other things around here, but there's not a lot. It's mainly residential. Um, and then I'll go back to the computer and look at this and we'll see what we do that and how we transfer this from here, my information um, and my observation onto OpenStreetMap. Yep, so um, that sunny side was just uh if we kind of go over here um where was i so i printed this on a different page of field maps um i can see the school on the page and it was along this road um and there's the bus stop um so it was about there and so again this is just on open street map i'm logged in in the top right still and i click edit um, and it loads this ID editor again. So we can see it's good good uh, quality aerial imagery here. 
Um, and yeah, there we go. The bus stop was there. I think actually on my field papers, it appears here. And I think someone's actually already moved it since um, the time that I was actually there. So the bus stop's fine. Um, that's good. Now, um, I can go here and um, I can click point because I think we'll continue with points. so make it a bit easier. Um, and it's this whole building area. So I'm going to click the point here. I'm going to type church in again. Um, and it gives me Christian Church, an example, um, which is here. And we can see it's waiting for the um, the name. Um, so it's Sunnyside Methodist Church. And I did that as a scribble, so I'm just going to check. Yeah, I have spelt that right. Um, so that's there. We've got the religion. The denomination, well, it's in the name, but remember, people might be using this to look specifically for Methodist churches. So um, I will put Methodist there. Um, it's actually suggested some di different denominations. Um, don't think this is the United Methodist. I'll just put Methodist there because that's as much as I know right now. Um, and I don't know any of the other details. Um, that's kind of all I've got there. Um, but yeah, that kind of all works. Um, what else did I put on my notes? I also, um, noted that there was a footpath and we can kind of see it on the aerial imagery. So the footpath's not a point. It's a, a line, of course. So I click the line feature. And then I click, now because it joins onto this road, I need to make sure that's glowing in the orange colour. And it is, so I click, and that means it's put a dot within the road. So any sat-nav programs will know they connect. Um, it's not good enough to put it close enough, um, although it might look okay, connection's important. And then you can see it's kind of attached, so I click some other points, it goes here. And if it's straight, you don't need too many, if it was a curve I put more dots so such is here it goes around here and then I click and drag to move click there and then join it on here and we can see that the dots glowing so put there and to stop adding this anymore I just click that same dot and our line is glowing because we've not said what that line is um, so in the same way as the places of worship here we go footpath um, it's not a cycle or anything, it's a footpath. And as simple as that. And this footpath doesn't have a name, most of them don't. Um, and I don't need to go into too much detail of surface or width because um, I think it was tarmac um, or asphalt, but um, it's kind of a typical path of the area. So that's fine. So it's just the two things because I didn't need to move that bus stop in the end. And then I'll click save and I can go adding another church during my walk and visits of public places. Um, that's the note. What I didn't say in the other video is also you can add other fields about the change set comment. So this isn't this is kind of about the changes you're making. Um, one we like to do is sources, um, and we can put survey, which means I actually went there. Occasionally, like, there's information that OpenStreetMap has permission to copy from, so we could um, say what imagery we used, which is um, being aerial imagery. It did help us out a bit. Um, but the main thing, I think, we got all that information from the survey. Um, I could put, some people like to say, um, field papers, but actually I think that might as well have just been on notes. But we got the comment there, um, and we can tick this box again to say we'd like someone to review these edits as well. Um, 
and then we click upload and again that will update on OpenStreetMap. Um, I'm not going to look at all these um, these changes all one by one um, but it's good to save them in small batches. Don't make kind of 50 changes to the map and then save it um, just in case your computer crashes. Um, but that's done and we'll uh, keep on mapping some places of worship. So behind me, amongst the terrace of houses, is Philadelphia Spiritualist Church. So it's not a very distinct building when we look at it makes it harder to place but across the busy road is a small road so I think it's roughly there um, I'm not going to mark that with a, a cross because it's not Christian but I'll just do a dot and then I can write it Philadelphia Spiritualist Church and that's a simple one, um, there's not a lot around here else to map other than the houses, um, there's a new bottle with the closest shops, the post office up there, um, and it's a bit of a way for other shops. There, I did notice a big sign um, saying that there's a new housing estate coming, so that just shows you the importance, like, people around here probably know there's a spiritualist church, but when you move to the area, you're going to want to know where these places are potentially um, so any new residents it will help them but we've got that point on our field papers um, we could possibly write that down just or from memory it's that simple if we, if we knew it maybe if we go to the spiritualist church but we'll once again go back to the computer fast forward when I get home and see how we put this information onto the street map The, um, the Spiritualist Church was down here in Philadelphia. That's Philadelphia in the northeast of England, um, not in North America. Um, yeah, so it's about here. I think that's the road. Yep, that matches my field papers. Um, and it was somewhere around here. So um, before we edit, a simpler way that I can actually tell you if you're struggling with how to edit OpenStreetMap, there is one way um, to provide this information, particularly in this example, maybe you didn't write it down, but as I said, you might just know the, church, the spiritualist churches there. Um, and so if you look at these controls on OpenStreetMap, you don't even need to be logged in. Um, there's this speech bubble with a plus sign. So we, you can click that, a blue marker appears. Now it's helpful if we kind of try and move it here. Um, and this is an OpenStreetMap map note. Um, so we can describe what's there. We can say spiritualist church here. Um, if I spell it right. Um, and so what this does when we add notes is it doesn't save it to the OpenStreetMap database. Um, so if it won't show on the map, it won't show in apps, um, and it can't be queried because we're not put religion, we're not put all the tags here. But we add note, and that means other OpenStreetMap um, ed people, mappers as we call them, can kind of find that, and they can, um, they can then go and see, oh, okay, I'll go and visit that. I know something's missing, they can walk along that road and take notes, as we did. Um, so it may be, as I said, OpenStreetMap relies on volunteers. It may be that that doesn't get put into OpenStreetMap for a while. Um, it's a lot better if we close that. We know it's there. We know what we're doing, because I've taught you. So click the edit button. It loads ID editor. Um, and we can see it here. We've got some aerial imagery. I knew it was slightly, there was that uh, road there behind the houses. It was somewhere about here. It looked like it was part of the terrace, but I think you can actually work it out. Um, and we're going to use the point again. 
just there. I think it's right. Um, someone else might figure out it's different. Now, it's not a Christian church, so I'm going to search place of worship. And we'll tick that. Um, and the name, if I type this in, um, oh, Philly, Phil, Phil, uh, Del, P, R, Spiritualist Church. Um, the religion, as I said, it's not Christian. It says it's spiritualist, but what, uh, what, uh, value do I put on that tag? Um, well, if we're not sure, there is the OpenStreetMap wiki. Um, I'll leave a link here for you. The um, gives lots of information, documentation about OpenStreetMap. So we can look up amenity place of worship. And um, it tells us about mapping it. Um, but particularly, it has a link. To, in fact, on the right, it says useful denominations. Um, so we could look at denomination, but we'll look at religion, the, the primary one. And it's got all these values that people use. So um, there's various things here. And um, it makes it easier if we press Control F, um, we can search for spiritualist. There we go. It's as simple as that. Um, if it's a church where uh, the group's into spiritualism, we use the tag spiritualist. So I'll just paste that into religion. Um, I didn't take details of the address, but that will be a helpful way to narrow down where it is. Um, and I don't think there are denominations of spiritualist. Um, yeah, so unclassified Christian. Oh, so some people may be put under Christian. So if there's other denominations of spiritualist specific groups, that can always be changed by someone else. Um, but that's the information there, and I, I didn't really, there wasn't much here. Um, it's residential area. Um, yes, someone's mapped it as such. Um, but it all looks good. So I'm just going to save that. Uh, and just put just one place of worship mapped. Um, and I think think we're kind of getting the hang of this. Um, I mean, if you're still unsure, and by all means do, you can tick that box again. Um, but it's, it's like the others we've done. The religion's a bit different, but I think we're fine. Um, and I know my other changes were okay. Maybe you got feedback. But we'll click upload and that saves to OpenStreetMap. And so we can then continue on mapping places of worship. Across the road behind me is uh, Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. So I'm going to put a cross. I can clearly see it there. Um, and I'll just abbreviate that to JW. And uh, then we'll be able to look at how we map that. But what's around here? Not much. Um, it's just outside Hortonley Spring, so I could map the shops and the library and stuff, but that'll easily take me a, a day of mapping, so I might have to come back for that. Um, you can see there's two bus stops, one either side, and of course, people uh, going to the Kingdom Hall might come by bus, so that's useful to map. I can see on my, on my field maps that these bus stops are already here, um, so that I don't need to do that. Although it's good to note that the one on the same side as the JW um, Hall has a bench. The one on this side, they both have shelters, but the one on this side doesn't have a bench in it. Um, and that might matter for people. You know, if you're waiting, um, if you're using the bus on this side, you might want to wait inside the uh, Kingdom Hall first um, and, and not be waiting without a place to sit down. Um, or you might want to walk to bus stop where there's a bench um, if people map the other benches. So I'll note that down and then we can uh, continue mapping and finding more places of worship.
This is Horton, and we can see the post office is mapped and the church there. And the big roundabout, this is where we found the Kingdom Hall. And so we'll zoom in and we'll click edit and it loads open street map. Um, so we can see this is the building that was across the road from where I was. Um, you know what, we could be a bit more advanced and let's map this as an area. Um, so this is the Kingdom Hall, it's got kind of the sticky out porch. Um, so we just, it's similar to that line. I'm just clicking the dots around here. Um, it goes slightly under these tree branches. So, you know, I'm not going to do a curly bit around the trees because it is under there. Click there and you can see it's making an area. Um, and I'm going to click around here. There are some adjoining buildings, but they're not uh, part of it. So I'll just click there and to finish off, like when we did the footpath, we just click the same dot and it highlights it. So we're going to go place of worship um, and Jehovah Witnesses. Um, so it doesn't appear on the religion page. That's because it's part of Christian. I think there is, however, um, on the denomination page and it's under Christian. So if we go back to where we're editing OpenStreetMap, we're going to put um, religion is Christian and the denomination Jehovah's Witness and you can see it's done it with a underscore um, where the space will be and that so it's easy to read by the computers and if we all do it in that way um, it means it can be done the same um, and because I did an area it's the the kind of suggestion here was a building place of worship so it's added a building equals yes tag um, so it knows that outline is the building. Um, and so that goes on with the name. And it was just called Kingdom Hall on the sign. Um, it wasn't kind of Horton um, Kingdom Hall or anything like that. Maybe it's officially known differently and someone might um, change that. But that, that's kind of the Kingdom Hall and we map somewhere as an area. Um, we've got these bus stops, um, so there's a suggestion there um, that kind of alternative tags to change. I know in this area we're not quite using those tags, um, but I'm going to just look down here at the tags because it's easier. Um, and what did I say about this one? If I get the right page, I've got so many... Uh, of these field papers I need to see. So the one on the same side as the Kingdom Hall, it had a bench. So I can go bench equals yes. Um, it also had a shelter. Um, and so that might help people out trying to find. Um, and I'm just looking this one on the other side where I stood. Um, Someone's already said it's got a shelter, actually, so that's good to know. Um, but I can put bench no. Um, I don't think that's important. I think by default it's assumed there's no bench at bus stops. Um, if anyone's using that data, it doesn't show up on the main open street map, but there may be more specific uses. But our main focus was the Kingdom Hall and that the bus stops are in the correct locations. So we've done that and we can um, put uh, adding Kingdom Hall Church building. Um, it's got some warnings about the bus stop, but that was kind of warnings on not something I changed, that it was already like that. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and because we did this as a building, it's our first actual area. Maybe I might go back and tick that box again. You know, it doesn't help to have someone look off over your changes that you've made. Um, and and so that's good. So we can tick that and upload um, and it goes on OpenStreetMap. Um, so that's the Kingdom Hall. And, and I didn't stop there. I continued um, 
continue mapping some places. So let's go have a look. We've seen a few examples of places of worship, but um, yeah, around where I live in the villages and in Durham City even, it's, it's mainly churches. Um, so I've come to Newcastle, a much bigger city in the northeast of England. Um, there's lots of different cultures and religions here. So we can see there's St. James's Park over in the background. Um, that football stadium is not a place of worship. We'll map it in other ways. Um, but to the west of the city along Westgate Road, um, there's lots of different churches, but also mosques and Sikh temples. So I'm going to have a look at them. I've got my clipboard still, but with field papers, I made it um, cover several pages and it gives me a nice overview of that. So I'll show you that and I'll look. I think a few of the places, I think the majority of places around here have been mapped. Um, but I'm going to go and look, um, and if they're not, I'll take notes. Um, the ones that are, we can still use. I'll show as examples of how they've been mapped, um, and you might have something similar um, that is missing from OpenStreetMap that you want to add. So this Sikh temple is our first example, and um, if I show you a picture of the front of the building, it's got nice, very clear to see the name. Um, However, that's a long name and really tricky for me to remember and to make sure I write down correctly. So I think I might just write a mark on the map if it is missing and maybe some initials, but then I'll take a photo. Or I might number the marks on the map and remember the order of the photos I've taken. And that means when I get to my computer, I don't have to go, oh, did I write that down quite right? Uh, is my handwriting bad? I can look back at the picture. Um, and particularly if there's notice boards, I might spot things on that photo that I didn't realise, but when I'm at my computer, I, I find out that's helpful information. Um, so I'm going to walk down a few of these streets. We'll see what we find. But I think for most of this, it'll probably be confirming and looking at the computer. Um, so yeah, we can look at this uh, Sikh temple and how's that mapped on the computer. Right, we've got Newcastle now. As I say, there's a lot more places. Um, there's St. James's Park mapped as a football stadium. Uh, but we were along here in Westgate. So we do want to zoom in because it won't allow us to edit the whole city because it's a large area. Um, it takes a lot to download and can, it makes it easier to make big mistakes. So zooming in is good. Um, and we can see, I was there, because we can see the, the Sikh temple, and I'll click edit. Um, and it, yeah, look, it's very clear uh, with its architecture. So if I select this, it's been drawn as an area, um, and I promised you can see the name it's got and the various tags. So um, scrolling down gives us a summary. It's got some address tags, place of worship, building, um, and the religion Sikh. So no specific denomination. I think there are denominations of Sikh. You could add that in. Um, I think if we go to the wiki um, and we search on the page for Sikh, um, that doesn't have any denominations there. So maybe they're not being mapped yet. Maybe nobody's using that data, but a place where it could be expanded. Um, but that's that's their own religion and, and that's how it's been mapped. So that's a, a good one. Um, there were a few other places. Um, this building here um, is a religion Christian. It's not actually got denomination uh, mapped. It's um, got in the name that it's Hillsong, which is sort of an evangelical church. Um, so I'm not sure if that, that does go. There we go. There's some. Uh, could map it as evangelical um, church. 
Um, you can see if there's any other bits. There's some specific French and um, American evangelical churches. Um, Non-denominational, maybe if it's if it's because it's specifically uh, Hillsong. Um, kind of debatable there. What I would possibly do is look at another city that has a Hillsong church and see if they've mapped it, um, if they've used a denomination there. Um, but we'll skip that for now. Um, I went round here on which was a bit confusing. This church had in a way. This was St. Matthew's Church, uh, Big Lamp. Very nice, interesting church with a bell tower. There's also, I noticed the back door has a nearly new shop. So we put shops on OpenStreetMap. We can put this shop on um, and uh, we can still use that religion tab tag. So it won't be a place of worship because the building itself is but we'll put a separate point um, that's a shop and religion is Christian um, and where was it it was somewhere in the corner around here I'm gonna add a point because there was that shop there um, and so I can do it as a shop um, and the shop tag it kind of asks us uh, what kind of shop it is i think it's a charity shop is what i got from their sign um although they were closed um don't think it displayed a name there might have to look back at the video for that again um but we can go there uh we could could say it's operated by saint matthew's church although it's but it's in the building next to you. You know, that just gives a bit of extra information. Um, and similar to how we did this church hall, we can provide extra information by saying it's Christian shop um, and operated in that way. I'm not aware of anyone using the data, but it could be an interesting uh, place and, and you could use that data yourself in the ways I explained in my previous video talking um, about OpenStreetMap and place, places, um, you could use an overpass query to find shops that have a religion tag. Um, there was this place here, which looks like it's been mapped. So I almost missed this place and um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it either between the traffic lights and the afternoon um there you go the afternoon sun uh causing lighting issues but i th thought it was just a shop or a restaurant there's actually a place that's the international society of krishna consciousness um so i'll take a photo making sure i remember the details um and i'll be able to add that onto the map because i think that's buddhist i'm not sure if it counts as a place of worship um but that'll be interesting to do um that does have the name I I S K C O N Newcastle which um was the um Krishna place. Um they mapped it as a community centre. I wasn't completely sure if it was a place of worship, that might be a bit confusing, but someone perhaps knowledgeable is there. Um, um but those there are those places. Uh, I have made one change here rather than just look around. Um, if I didn't want to um, do that, if I didn't want to save anything, I can just click OpenStreetMap logo and go back to viewing the map instead of seeing the edit platform. But I did add a shop. I did add a shop um, that's run by the church. Um, and again, so I can put my source as survey because I actually went there and saw it. Um, and we're still fairly new. We can still tick that box and upload it. Um, and then we'll move on. I've got, because we'll move on and see, um, I was walking around a lot. There were a fair
various places in Newcastle to map. So um, I kind of had several pages over over one area that joined up, as I showed you can do in fill papers. But um, let's have a look, build, look at the places I've been wandering um, after I was in this part of Westgate. So I've been walking around and I've found this mosque. It wasn't all that obvious, um, but I did just about notice it. The sign um, is uh, falling apart a bit hard to see, so that's a reason that writing on my field papers might be more helpful than taking a photo. Um, I've done both just to be careful, so I've got a photo of it, but I'm also writing it down um, in case I get confused why there's missing letters. But you can see them, uh, at least with the eye you can. Um, so I'll add that on and let's see how we add a mosque to OpenStreetMap. As I said, in this part of Newcastle, there's lots of small mosques or um, Muslim centres, Islamic centres. So I'm going up and down the roads around here trying to find ones that might be missing. Hair getting swept away everywhere. Um, this one essentially it's in a building that was a house um it's so easy to miss but i walk past i can see it's there um so i'll check it's on open street map i think this one is i'll add it to my field papers just to be sure um the other side of the road there's newcastle muslim center again it's just a house or built in the space of a house i'm not sure um so i'll add that and as I'm going around, so I'm currently on the page B2 of my printout from Field Papers. Um, on that overview sheet that I've got, I'm just kind of hashing the areas I've been, which helps when I'm plotting my route um, that I don't um, go the same road twice because that would take a, uh, a long time, I guess. So um, I'm going to spin around. I'm going to get closer to the... Uh, Take a proper photo of that one and record the location um, and we can see how we map these all but once you've done one or two they all become um, fairly simple you, you know the tool by now and uh, and if you've done all the ones near you when you're visiting anywhere um, if you can check open street map see if it's missing if not you know what to do but um, yeah let's continue And behind me, over that side, is uh, very obviously a mosque. It's Newcastle Central Mosque, an Islamic centre. It's got a more specific name, which I can see is already on OpenStreetMap. Um, but we can take a look, see how it's been mapped, and see if we can improve it with any other data that we can see here. Um, so yeah, there it is. It's not very central, but I guess compared to all the little, smaller mosques and uh, places around this this part of uh, to the west of Newcastle um, yeah it's close enough to the city um, so I did several places here we can see that with double road um, and I don't have to do them in the order I can do them in an order that makes sense on field papers on my scribbles um, which probably will be a lot easier um, than kind of doing it in the way I walk so I think I walked a bit strange but I've zoomed in here and I'll click edit um, and we open up the editor and I have to remember I need to find Kingsley Terrace so if I click this one yeah that's Kingsley and it was to the right here there was a place of worship its name was Archer Al Mosque um, and the religion is Muslim so that's how it gets described in OpenStreetMap Islam is described as Muslim um, as I say so they all link together um, and I think that's all the information I had about that mosque so I'm gonna continue dragging along um, so where did I go there was somewhere back on the main road down here 
that was the the main mosque so we can see the tags of that um it's got the address it's got the name um it doesn't actually also what we could do um oh if i don't click the wrong thing i'm gonna have to click on do on that there we go um so yeah i can also add a tag i could put alternative name and it was also known as central newcastle mosque that maps it there and the alternative name doesn't show up but it does a uh, i think a lot of the search engines that use open street map data also look at alternative names but the main name's there. And then I was somewhere up here. Yep, we saw the, this is the one place I mapped that was um, Newcastle to Weed Islamic Center. And that matches what my notes say. Um, and across the road, there was this building. So I could just click the building that's already mapped there. And I can give it the name, I write NMC, so I think that's Newcastle Muslim Centre. Now, I don't know if that counts as, a, it's not got mosque in the name, so I don't think it um, counts as a place of worship. I'm not quite sure what that building is and what it does. Um, it may be that it's community centre is better tagging. Um, I possibly should have spoken to any people there. I didn't see anyone around, but could have found out more information. What I can do is we can say that the religion is Muslim. And so the name will at least appear on the building um, and that will direct people to where it is. And maybe someone with some knowledge can then um, tag it as a community center if it's just a place they meet and do activities. If it's a, a kind of worship, place of worship, um, and that's appropriate, they can add those tags. Um, and then, of course, we... Um, so I've made a few changes here. Um, so we click Save, and we go a few more places of worship and related... Um, Buildings mapped in West uh, Newcastle. And I can put the source of survey. So that's a good example where I know what's there and what isn't there um, based on visiting, whereas someone else, their source may be local knowledge or source may be kind of um, talking to people and we can tick that box and go upload so that's adding stuff to OpenStreetMap hopefully from this you've learnt the basics of editing places of worship um, and kind of some related information um, it is really good not to just map where you go and what, what you're interested in, but the other places around, such as the bus stops that people will use, footpaths that make uh, shortcuts. And it all improves and we work together um, to make nice maps of, of the world so that everyone can use that data. Um, thanks for listening and thanks for learning. Do give it a try and, try and edit. Um, as a as I say, you, if you've not seen my other video, I talked in depth about why OpenStreetMap is important and why we should edit it, and and particularly why that's important for faith-based uh, people and faith traditions. Um, so this has been another video with the support of URI, the United Religions Initiative, um, and I think it's great what they're doing. Um, wanting to just bring this knowledge of OpenStreetMap to more people. Um, so 
if you've not watched that, please do go and watch it. I explain a lot there. Um, and if you're interested, if you want to see other things that Matt, that I do, that can come across, you can continue to watch my YouTube channel, Mapper Diaries, um, and see what I do now that I do a lot of mapping. Um, you can also find there's various groups on that relate to OpenStreetMap around the world. Um, they meet in person or online um, and and they can help you and it's good. You can maybe meet some people face to face, which can can support that editing um, OpenStreetMap and, and learning what to do.